Hello friends! This is People Are Interesting with Jan K. In each episode of this show, unique individuals share stories that take us on a ride across ideas and places. Featuring crocodile attacks in Indonesia, escaping war-torn Lebanon, and shark protection schemes in Mauritania. This podcast takes you where you've never been before. Enjoy and thank you for joining the club. Okay, and we're running. Hello. Hello. Hello How's it going? I heard I heard you've been trekking across Alps in three t-shirts because <laughs> you didn't have enough warm clothes. Oh, man. Is that a gossip? Is that a truth? Ah, oh, no, that's that's the truth. It's been uh, yeah, I just got back from from a long, well, not that long, maybe like 25 days, traveling around Europe. It was pretty good. I mean, I started off in like the Alps, like, um, and it was just really cold, and then ended up in in Greece, where it was just really hot, so I was just between two extreme temperatures at all times. And uh, yeah, the sleeping wasn't great when it was cold. There's no sleep, because I was wearing all my clothes at one point during the night. <laughs> Couldn't sleep. So you, what did you, was that your plan, essentially, to pack lightly? Yeah, that was like, like, um, when I was buying all of my stuff, it was like, okay, what's like the lightest thing I can buy? Right. And even with clothes, like I, I tend to always like overpack. And I was like, no, this time I really had to like restrain myself in, in overpacking on clothes. And I think I just had, I had two t-shirts, a pair of my trousers, which I'm wearing now, which are very fashionable because they uh, convert into shorts as well. Mm, that's uh, that's very, the move. Very convenient. You know, practicality is, is key, I think. I mean. And I had an extra pair of shorts that I could swim in, so it was pretty minimal. Mm-hmm. Uh, brought a jacket as well, just in case, which I definitely uh, thank myself for in hindsight. Um, but I mean, it was it was like I think I had all like the necessary equipment uh, to camp, um, all fairly minimal. And I was like I was like camping in like camping areas mm-hmm. rather than um, like wild spots, just because of the convenience of having a toilet and a shower like i also feel like if you got caught just shitting somewhere in the alps i don't think that that they would be happy and that would have required me to bring like a shovel as well Mm, because maybe you have to bury it and yeah probably no i think you could i think they would potentially find someone who does that (laughs) what do you think do you have you checked what are the wild camping laws Uh, in france before setting up i didn't actually because i was pretty like content with going into just uh camping sites i mean having to confront like a french wine farmer and shitting in his vineyard <laughs> i wouldn't have done that but <laughs> it wouldn't have been great i mean it was all pretty loose i think the the laws in in europe maybe are a little uh looser than they are in uh, the uk i know there's like a lot of restrictions of camping in in uh in england although scotland to be fair is you can camp anywhere in scotland any farms as well which yeah. is pretty cool I feel like England is very different to Scotland when it comes to so camping laws. To everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, I haven't really actually done much camping in, in either of the countries. Um, but having watched like people on YouTube do it, like it just seems like Scotland is just far more relaxed. It's just not that many people around. Like, the d- population density is a lot lower, I think. They like to think of themselves as Norway. <laughs> have you heard? Yeah, well, do they? Yeah, just because they have a lot of gas as well. <laughs> a lot of gas. Yeah, so I think I might be I might be butchering it, but Scotland is kind of aspiring to be like Norway in terms of governance, st- quality of life, and all that. And Norway's peak, isn't it? Mm, I've I've never been, but I did I didn't hear that many good good things about it to be fair i heard I it's it. yeah i heard it's expensive and people are sad Bro. yeah i heard that well. <laughs> wasn't it like uh denmark it's like oh it's like the happiest population but they have like the highest rate of um suicide like, no <laughs> not that far like a uh, subscribed antidepressants oh really than any other country mm, no i wasn't aware of that really i think it's denmark it's Oof. one of the scandinavian countries yeah i think i've 
see this is the problem I'm talking about, but I've never been. I'm sure it's lovely. <laughs> I don't want to yeah. shit talk Norway. I yeah, exactly. Been. But but it surely is extremely expensive because I think even when people from Sweden go to Norway, they're they are thinking, Jesus Christ, you know, we can't we can't afford to to do anything here. I wonder if it scales though. The wages tend to right. Like Swi Switzerland is really expensive, but you get paid more to be fair. Yeah, yeah. No, I think for for a normal person in Norway, I think it's fine. I don't think they're. I think they're happy. They're suffering. Their existence, yeah. They're all right. Yeah, I think they're they're fine. But give us maybe an overview of your trip on like a high level. What was going on to those of? Because I roughly know what, you know where you went and everything. But sure. th I, I'm not sure if the listeners will. No, yeah. It's uh. So I, I basically took a train to. Paris. It was super stressful, like getting out of the country with everything with COVID. Like I heard so many people recommending me against going on this trip, but generally speaking, it was like pretty like fine. It was fine, honestly. Like with all the restrictions, it was you can as long as you're double vaccinated, it's okay. But I basically started in uh, south west of France, I, I guess towards the middle, like a uh, Grenoble area, mm -hmm. and then I hitched like up to um, Switzerland, and then spent a few days there. Um, and then I took a train over to Italy, kind of, it was very much like, what, what city? And I had a general idea of where I needed to be, which was in the Dolomites by a certain date. And so I was like, okay, let's just, I just figured it out like mm -hmm. day by day. And so I just picked the cities as I went along. So I, I went to like Verona and Venice, um, just finding camping sites the day before. And I, then I spent a week in the Dolomites with my friend uh, Federico and we did He's like quite a good rock climber. We did shitload of uh, climbing in uh, the Dolomites in a place called Cortina. Like Oof, one of the most incredible that's very places nice. I've ever been. Honestly, the mountains are incredible. And then I like the final leg of my journey was going down to Greece, uh, and I went to a couple of islands. There I met my friend uh, Fran, who's also been on the podcast, I believe. Yes. Um, yeah, he has a place in one of the uh, one of the islands, and I went there. And we went again climbing. We like he's such like a climbing nerd as am I to be fair. And we were just like walking around the island, like looking for cliffs to climb it, like, over the water. Oh really? <laughs> Wait, so you were doing the free water solo? Yeah, the what deep is it water called? Solos. Deep water solo. Yeah. Oh, where are you? Yeah. yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Okay, tell it me more sick. about that. It was so good, like. Wait, so on the on the high level, what's the concept? What's deep water solving? So it's basically a part of, a, a, yeah, a part of climbing where you're not climbing with any ropes or safety, and it's just the the water that's gonna break your fall um, if the water is deep enough, which we were keen to check every time. And so yeah, you can climb up the wall, and, uh, and if you fall, you're you're fine. Um, but we, I mean, I'm like I'm like not that comfortable with heights. Well, I don't know actually. I mean, I found that when I was in the Dolomites climbing outside for the first time, being on like 30 meter walls, my my like knees were just like trembling when I got to the top. It was like pretty terrifying being that high up. You were doing 30 meter faces. Yeah. Woof. Leading them. Badass. The it was sick, man. I really enjoyed Legend. it. Legend. But then doing this deep water soloing, uh, like it took me took time for me to be able to be comfortable like jump just like jumping in from like above like six or seven meters just because it's, it's it still feels like you have time to think when you're oh falling, yeah you know it's like i'm falling and then i'm still falling right so it's, yeah but it got to a point where there was this wall that we it was like the first wall we went to and we couldn't find anything better than that or at least that's what i think fran thinks we found a better one um but it, we could top it out but it was like maybe like 15 15 to 20 meters and I got up like 10 meters high and I was like fuck it I'll just like keep going and I won't look down and I'll just stop this and then Fran was like Alex you're really high up and it just it just like triggered me and then I looked down I'm like oh my god <laughs> I, I, just, I just down climbed it was wow. terrifying and I just jumped from like 10 meters it was but it was uh, it was sick man that's insane <laughs> were you googling the spots or were you actually no. just looking them as you go your your own invention yeah, your own entirely just does like fran seemed to be confident that no one had ever climbed there before the walls were like actually quite good um it was, they were 
a li little bit tricky to get to. Like there was no beaches around, so we had to find like the nearest area to jump off, and then we put our climbing shoes on and swam over to the wall. And then the waves are like are crashing against this like sharp rock, and you kind of have to scramble up and avoid the sea urchins everywhere. Um, but the wall was good. I mean, there was other areas as well that I imagine people might have climbed on. Um, but there were no signs of chalk, no, for example. No, no chalk at all. Oh my god! Yeah, and that's like, incredible. Yeah, I mean, maybe it was a little bit sketchy because we, I mean, we've only been we've only been climbing for I guess a couple of years, and we don't really know what like solid rock feels like. So a lot of the times, it, it, there were things that just kind of like came right off the wall mm -hmm. when we grab onto them, which was a little bit. Was weird. it mostly limestone? What was the rock? Uh, I ain't got a bloody clue, mate. Honestly, it was sharp. That's Did you? Could you see, for example, kind of seashells within the rock, caked in 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 the rock? That's usually a good good sign of uh, limestone or no, a lot of you can see like holes in the water of, from from water. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely that. Okay, because it was quite sandy as well. I think. Oh, okay, maybe it's like sandstone. Yeah, mm. although really sandstones are very soft. Oh well, that, they that's super soft. Contradictory because it was not soft at all. They were not soft. They just as in like they they. Yeah, because sandstone you cannot, for example, you cannot trad sandstone because they are so soft that if you put your gear in the rock and fall, it's just gonna rip the the whole thing oh, out. Really? Yeah, you cannot you cannot do trad on a sandstone. What you do, what they do, is they use they tie knots on the rope and just put put the knots, jam knots in in the rope, and oh, that's, that's how they do it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't wanna do that. Yeah, so. Uh, actually, let's let's you know talk about Greece. Even though it's, it was the last leg of your journey, I understand. How did you come to this idea of trying free water soloing? Um, do I do I say deep water soloing? Deep water yeah, soloing. thank you. Close enough, mate. That's all yeah, right. <laughs> only one word. I'll it was a decent attempt. Yeah. Uh, because I'm just, you know, confused when you told me all the all the <laughs> insane things you've been doing. <laughs> Well, well, we initially like planned to go towards the mainland of Greece because it's like a really uh, established climbing area where there's like uh, rope climbing and loads of stuff. Um, but it's it was out of season and we needed rope and we needed like gear. And we tried contacting one of the stores that were there and they, they weren't open. And uh, so we were like, let's just go to one of the islands and take like a small, just like enjoy it as like a little vacation. And then turns out like the, we were just like, We've got our climbing shoes. Let's just see if we can find some walls to climb, honestly. And it kind of just went from there. The first day we did it, we were on uh, Spetsis and we didn't bring our climbing shoes. And it was kind of just like feet on the rock and it was a little bit painful. And then the next island we went to, we were like, you know what, let's just like take our climbing shoes somewhere and like see if we can climb on some walls. And it was, it was fine. It was really good. But uh, after having been spending, it was like, probably easier than the climbing that I did in the Dolomites like um, I was gonna say like we were climbing this route in the in uh, on one of the walls and some guy pulls off like a huge chunk of the wall and it comes down like 20 meters and the B layer at the bottom just like narrowly avoids death no just, yeah, some like burly German guy just like misses it by a foot and then just carries on like nothing happened <laughs> I mean it's amazing that the guy who was belaying God. him kept belaying him like nothing happened. Yeah, That's yeah. the thing. He, he was wearing a helmet, which I didn't realize because it's usually oh, that the would, climber that would help a him a lot. Yeah, I'm, a lot of people don't seem to wear helmets in climbing, and it's mm. like I don't know. It's you can really injure yourself in it. Oh yeah. And it just makes oh, sense. Yeah. I mean, Ideally, probably both should be wearing helmets. Yeah. I say this, and then I go cycling around heavy. London traffic without a helmet on, so maybe I'm contradicting myself. That's the thing, but here's the thing. I guess it's all about the function between post uh, likelihood of an event happening and um, the risk involved, if if that makes sense. So it's you're relatively unlikely to get harmed cycling. Of course, it happens all the time to yeah. people, like in the grand scheme of things. But you, as an individual, like. You're yeah. probably gonna be okay, whereas with with climbing, you you fall off all the time, and like one of those times, you might just bump your head, and that's enough to get give you a concussion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could probably apply the same argument for cycling, but 
Yeah, but the, I think the, there's an, like a counter argument is that when you're cycling on the road, your safety is also in the hands of like all the other people on the road. Whereas when you're climbing, your safety is really just between you and the belayer. And That's then, true. And when you have like the correct safety equipment, like the belayer really doesn't have to do that much. I agree you know, with the, you. The equipment can just catch catch you itself, and so your safety comes down to how comfortable you are with climbing the walls and how like how comfortable you are doing like certain moves. Um, I mean, I was, I was wearing a helmet the entire time just because Fed, who I was climbing with, and his sister will encouraged it, and they mm -hmm. know what they're doing. So I mean, why not? You know. That makes a lot of sense. So, in Greece you what kind of what kind of um routes did you climb what were your favorite things uh, that, you, that you did well we didn't do too much to be honest it was kind of just that single wall it was like a there was like a big crack all the way up the middle of it uh we did find like a, a really nice cave um doing like overhanging climbs which is really cool with all all of that with water underneath yeah with water how would you, how did you check whether it's deep enough Ah, oh, just without goggles. <laughs> oh, you, sw you swam with goggles. Oh, <laughs> without. In goggles. Oh, in goggles. Had a okay, look so you could gauge. And you can, you kind of, you can tell like how deep the water is because you can't really see the bottom or if it's a little bit darker yeah. as yeah. well. And you only need like, even if you're falling from like quite a height, I think generally speaking, like you're only gonna get submerged by like maybe like two or three meters. Mm -hmm. Even if you're falling maybe twenty meters, like it's not gonna change that much. Oh really? Yeah. Oh I think fair. So. That, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so you don't need too much protection. I mean, but after that, that was our first day that we, we found that um, that really solid climb. And then we were like, okay, there must be like, if this was like anything to go by on our first day here, there must be like some really insane walls all across the island. Mm -hmm. This island's like, I guess like, I don't know, maybe like 20 kilometers long. Um, and then we spent like the entire day, like the roads just like disappear after the main area. And so we were just like going along these like cliff faces and like huge just scrambling over these boulders to find another wall. And we like, we went around like half of the island and couldn't find a single one other than that first one. We found like a nice traverse, mm -hmm. um, but it was like, we walked for like an hour and a half and it was like a five minute climb. I was like, okay, let's go back now. <laughs> mm. So how would you how would you grade the stuff you did in Greece? Uh, probably not that hard to be honest. It was like maybe like five or six, but not nothing like like the climbing outside. I found like the grading that you have indoors is far more just I don't know. It's it's easier indoors basically. I think like I can climb indoors maybe like a six C plus. Um, and I can attempt maybe like a 7 8 um, but outside I can only climb like 6A plus 6B yeah. it's probably all just like terrible jargon to people who are not familiar with <laughs> climbing grades well th they need to educate themselves <laughs> it's my podcast <laughs> I know what you're talking you're about <laughs> um, fair I would say that you don't want to push yourself too much outdoors anyway especially if you're you know if you're just for like a couple of days you were saying you didn't have the rope you were doing everything yeah without any protection you, i think the adrenaline must have been hitting you hard all the time yeah. anyway right yeah and it's was so dead man like after climbing like five six consecutive days in italy then to arrive in greece and just like do more um and like having to swim to the like climbs as well like after you after you like you're on the wall for like a minute or so like really pumped and then you have to like swim back like 200 meters to the shore i was like i was struggling honestly i mean i'm, I'm really a, i'm a comfortable swimmer but like i was just my arms were just so dead uh-huh i just had to like turn around on my back and just lay there nice. for like a minute wait so you would jump off jump off i mean in the water yep and then so the the first thing aren't the waves smashing against the cliff yeah they are what's the situation so, there I, we had we had like different approaches like we, neither of us had done it before but i just kind of like raised my feet so that they would start like touching the wall under the water and so i could get like a footing 
Um, but there was like loads of like sea urchins that I could see and it was like, uh, they just creep me out, these little like black voids that you don't want to put your foot on. Yeah. But the climbing shoes are pretty like, you know, hard leather. True. I think you're going to be okay. Maybe I stepped on a few and didn't realize. Um, but then like the walls as well, like they're super like sharp. It's like you're grabbing onto like coral. Right. It was nasty. And so I waited for like a wave to like push, push up, up. Push up, yeah, against mm against the rock so that I could grab something a little bit higher up right and then just kind of got into a comfortable position where I could like pull into it (laughs) you savage I love it (laughs) how big were the waves oh not that big mate only like a meal oh nice but were these were this were the currents strong there uh no not really I mean like there was boats around to be fair um and so they kind of created a bit of a splash when whenever they came up and there was mm-hmm. like a there was like a rock, like a very not like a tiny rock, but like it had a church on it, and that was about it. Uh, I guess maybe like three hundred meters offshore, and we were just like staring at it, being like, "There's a." We just could see like this perfect wall right. on there, being like, "We got to climb that." But right. there was too much like water traffic, and the, on this island, there's no. Um, well, I mean, there was no like cars, no motorbikes. Everything's just like donkeys. R- and oh really? Yeah. And there's no like, there was no like boat hire or like canoes that we could find either. Mm-hmm. It's like a super small island, and so like, okay, yeah, maybe uh, we were really considering going across, but it would have been a little bit sketchy with all the with all the water traffic. So with your like, climbing shoes on. With our climbing shoes oh my on, god! <laughs> trying to get boat drivers' attentions. Imagine. Hills. Yeah, they would probably rescue you, possibly against your will. <laughs> Oh wow, that's amazing. What's the do you feel like your mindset changed in any way after that experience? It is a very let's say mind expanding experience yeah, to do something like was, that. It was really cool, man. Like I've never climbed outside before and um I've you know, I've only been into climbing for the past couple of years, but now I'm like really like excited about it. Like I haven't been before. Like I'm quite comfortable with doing all the ropes now for lead climbing mm-hmm. and and I'm just like, yeah, like now I really just want to focus on like trying to train for harder routes. Oh, yeah. And just like building up my body and just, I don't know. I, I've never really been into a sport like this before. Right. And it's, and doing th- the climbing in, in Italy and, and in Greece, it's like, oh, you, c- you can just like, you can use climbing as an excuse to like travel to really cool places I as agree. well. I agree. You know, it's like something to do. And you can just add it on to all the other stuff that you would typically do during a holiday anyway. Right. And you can just do like a sport that you really enjoy. That, yeah, I agree with you a hundred percent. A hundred percent. What's what what was the experience like in Italy? Very Yeah, Italy was really cool. We were in a this mountainous alpine town called Cortina. Um, I think they hosted the Winter Olympics previously. I think they're hosting them um, again in 2026, maybe? Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I heard it's a beautiful place. Oh, uh, yeah. It was really incredible, man. Um, it, I got It's very, like, uh, very, like, rich kid party town a yeah. little bit, to be fair. Um, like, you go to, like, I'm not sure if you've been skiing, but you know, like, this, like, uh, these clubs that you have in the mountains where you've got all the skiers and like every, it's like very much like that like, good stuff yeah it was pretty fun to be honest i mean everyone there seems to ski um not as many people climb as i expected to be honest they do mm-hmm. have like alpine guides and there are a lot of climbers in the area but like there's still like plenty of like tourists just like stopping and like taking photos of you when you're climbing up the wall mm. um, oh so the, the the walls are literally Almost in the city, oh, and not yeah, in the I mean, city, in the village slash yeah, town. I mean, you're, the village is in the in the valleys, and the the mountains just surround the the village. And there's so many different climbing spots you can go to. Like we didn't just walk. Uh, you know, I, I mean, driving is was how we got around. Like okay. everything was within like 20, 30 minutes drive. To be fair, um, I mean, you could walk if you wanted, but if you're bringing on your climbing gear, you don't really want to. Do yeah, it. no, of course. Um, I mean, some route, some places like ours this place called Cinque Torre, which is five towers. That's the postcard that I got you. Okay. Um, and so that's kind of like the iconic area, I think, of it. And that was like, you know, we had to take like a ski lift up uh, to get to the area. And and then it's like a 20 minute hike. But other places were like five minute walk from the, um, 
from where we parked the car. So super, super convenient. Yeah, that's it. That's the thing? Yeah, yeah. So you were climbing here? Yeah, we were climbing one of these. Holy shit. We didn't get anywhere near the top. It's like... No, of course. This is probably like a few hundred meters yeah, high, right? Yeah. Damn. Super cool. Like we only did like a single pitch, which is basically yep. you get to the top and then you come down. Mm -hmm. You get to the top of the route, roughly like 20 to 30 meters. Um, but a lot of people doing like multi-pitch. Right. Which, multi-pitch the same as trad climbing. So, um, no, multi-pitch is when you do a many lengths of rope and every time you get, you do the full length of rope, you're belaying partner then climbs and right. you're belaying him from the top yeah then you both are at the top of the route route and one of you again leads the thing leads another pitch and then you repeat yeah, okay. the, the yeah, yeah. and that allows you to you know do a few hundred meter walls because um to the listeners the rope is at, at if it's the longest, what is it? Eight, yeah, uh, 80 meters? 80 meter rope, yeah. Okay, yeah, so which means that you can realistically use only 40 meters yeah. of that rope, right? Because. Um, you need the other 40 to, exactly. to be laid down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it, you would never be able to do a wall that is, you know, a few hundred meters. So that's the way to, to do it. Oh, um, what about trad, though? And trad is when you don't have bolts in the wall, what you have is gear. So when yeah. all the cracks, you place your gear in the cracks as you go. So the gear is performing the same role as the bolts are right. uh, yeah, in, yeah. in lead climbing. So the risk element of that is that if you fuck up the, the placement of the gear, it will fall off. Yeah. It will oh, fall well, out when scary. you fall and then you fall to the another one. So then the For question him. arises, how legit is the one that you placed below it, right? Yeah. So there are those sto stories of like stressed out people who are like, Okay, so you're climbing, like, you know, it's a bit sketchy, so you put so something in. It's a bit sketchy, but, like, you know, it's better this sure. than nothing. You yeah. keep climbing, like, that, uh, that crap is... You really is have to trust your good. Exa you? Exactly. And, and so the... So, you know, like, you have scale grade for the, the, the difficultiness of route, right? Yeah. Um, five, six, A plus, things yeah, like yeah. that, right? You also have a scale for trad as to how sketchy the place for for a <laughs> trick uh, of sketchiness yes yes <laughs> if, if if it's really easy you know you have good places good. to to put your gear yeah um it, it's easier it's they, more they like they do a lot of trad in the uk i think like in wales there's a lot oh of trad yeah climbing. that's where yeah. that's where it started oh really yeah yeah in wales in snowdonia i think that's oh, no. where the trad climbing uh you know that's the cradle of trad climbing, I think. It's definitely something that I'm interested in, but oh, one yeah. step at a time, to be honest. I've only just oh, figured yeah. out how to do lead climbing. That's amazing. That's amazing, brother. I um, I heard this story. <laughs> um, my friend was doing course on climbing, including trad climbing. Right. And his instructor was telling him that there was this, you know, some, some other guy was doing a similar course and they were climbing and it was kind of this situation where, you know, like you, you climb, it's a bit scary. So you place bullshit um, gear in the rock, you keep climbing, you place another like sketchy one. Mm -hmm. And so the guy and, and they were doing it. There was three or so of, of, of them. Um, climbing so there was the, the guy who was kind of leading the pitch and there was the there were the guys who were belaying uh, or one, just one guy was yeah. belaying and he the guy fell off and uh, obviously the gear popped out and he fell and the other one popped out as well <laughs> which uh, that means that he was falling at least six meters yeah that's a roughly by then up yeah yeah so he fell to and the and the and the one below below them was like the the one on which like the belaying guy was already so like it, it got like a bit scary so the guy like fell and it stressed him out so much that he threw up and shot himself <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, imagine imagine i uh, no no i don't blame him at all i i totally understand it 
I completely understand that. I mean, what do you do from there? You just keep climbing with, a, with your trousers full of I shit? I have no clue. I have no clue. Um, oh, I could not do that. Yeah, no, but that's stressful. That's a stressful business. Uh, doesn't suck. I mean, even with like trad climbing, you have to worry about so many like knots as well. Mm. Like, there was there's one thing I had to learn in uh, in lead climbing where you get to the top and sometimes there's like a carabiner so you can like clip it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there's just like a metal ring. Yeah. And if there's a metal ring, it's like okay, like I need to like retie my safety knot and like the first time i was doing it i'm like oh this feels so like wrong to just get rid of my only like safety right now i mean you're clipped in in, in other ways right but i was like double checking and then triple checking yeah. it's like as soon as i put my weight on this i need to i agree i need to be comfortable I because agree with you. so much like you have to check like you have to i mean <laughs> when i was climbing <laughs> with uh, Fed and his sister we were climbing like a super easy route uh, it was like 20 meters high like maybe like a 5 we were, it was like the first route of the day and um, and we usually we do like a, Fed calls it a buddy system where it's like you know you check the you check your belay and you check the person climbing make sure everything's sorted and I was checking Camilla and I didn't maybe I should have checked something that I, she basically her harness wasn't like fully strapped in mm-hmm. and uh, I, I mean I checked the knot and I checked like sh- uh, like everything else and but I just didn't check that because it's like it's kind of like a given to have your harness on yeah and then um, she got to the top of the route and she's like take which means you have to pull the rope through and give it tension so that they don't fall and I took it and I pulled her harness off of her <laughs> yeah no and it was just strapped around her legs no yeah <laughs> How did that happen? I know. Holy she shit. She just gave like a huge like gasp. <gasps> and I was like, what? <gasps> and I just saw her harness like Wait, around so her you... waist. Like the, the front part just like came off. And I was like. Oh. So she only had the bit that was around her legs? Yeah. Yeah, <gasps> yeah. Those are like. And that like, yeah, we were at a point where she needed to like, she, she had her safety knot undone as well. Yeah, Jesus it was just uh, Christ. She didn't have a helmet on either. <laughs> this was our final day of climbing. Oh my and God! Like super easy <laughs> and then we we all just got like uh, hyper sensitive and just went over overboard with our safety after that point. <laughs> it was a bit sketchy. Oh my God! So that. I mean, was I it was it her first time climbing? No, she's pretty she's pretty good at climbing to be fair. Oh just, wow! Uh, yeah, I mean. That know. sounds terrifying. It just happens, I guess. Yeah, fair. Well, uh, what happened then? Did she, she, she yeah, fix she just, it herself? Yeah, she she, like, hold it on to yeah. the rock? She, oh, <laughs> wow, put, good put for her. I think she might have clipped in with some quick draws. Oh, yeah, that's a good shout. Um, so she was okay, but <laughs> a bit of a scare, honestly. Oh, yeah, I see. But wait, how? How did she clip her in with quick draws if the... If the thing around her heart, it would, because the, the 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 bit that carries your weight on your harness is the bit around your waist, so if that got untangled, there is there is there is no guess, point to support you. I mean, it's still. Ra- I mean, there's no support that your legs get. I mean, you don't. Ah, uh, yeah, fair. But, but I mean, I guess you can still like somehow clip into the to the quick draw. I don't know. I, I mean, she was 20 meters up. I didn't know what. No, she no, did. but uh, now that bit. you said it, of course, that that makes sense. Yeah. She was like hanging down, so it was like, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. No, that's scary. so not what I would like to find, like, no. experience. Jeez, Louise. Oh my. Okay, so you were doing lead in Italy. Yes, doing lead. Uh, we were there for like five days, like every day, nine in the morning, up, and like go grab lunch at like the local cafe place that serve like these really nice pizza slices you can take away for lunch find a climbing spot you bring like a, a route book it was pretty busy to be honest mm, some point I'm sure. we kind of had to queue for a oh really a, I mean it, it was only one point we had to do that mm. um, then you find your route and um, I got quite confident at one point where I was uh, I, I led like a 6A plus and I was like oh this is really good and then the next day Fed told me about we went with a bunch of people and Fed was like okay we might be a bit antisocial because I want to climb this uh, route that I've been like projecting for the past like couple of years and haven't been able to do it it's like a 6B 
and it was an overhang and it was only a 10 meter lead route but we got there it's uh, this route called airport no, I, think I just said that um but um there was like it's pretty overhangy rock was very sharp um and it ended up just like being a mission to the top any any means possible whoa this guy means business with his sound last system. Last music round here, I'm telling you. I thought it was a cyclist. Cause some dude who cycles around here. Oh Lasses yeah, I love those everything. cyclists. By the way, you they know. And, yeah, was they're he wearing riding. a yellow top? Uh, has he got a snapback on? Sunglasses. I think they're. I don't maybe remember. They're... Was he black? <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> maybe it was the same maybe one that passed by me when I was cycling been, here. Mate. It might have been or another black man. Well, because there is a lot of dudes like this. It's like um, it's a. Uh, it's an it's like a subculture almost <laughs> like biking with a I massive like, I don't speaker mind it, oh i love it a lot of it's people really like dislike it when people like, really last music outside oh uh, i like, know i like it because it, it, the guy who passed by me he was playing eye of the tiger so he's like <laughs> he's he's just living epic life so even even if like they pass you for like five seconds it's like oh so what like, i so, like it yeah, i, I love it, it no i love it not many people play music at the wall like any like crags oh like no i think this is kind of there's considered rude yeah there's an etiquette like anti although anti -social. bouldering for example is different so oh when yeah i've been to boulders um everyone's always played music really yeah sometimes it's shit music. how interesting but not a, not a lead i never went bouldering outdoors sorry I, I i went like two very small experiences of bouldering outdoors um and it, like it wasn't there weren't any people around so I, I, I don't really have the feeling of what the, yeah, no, fair enough. but that's interesting yeah because playing music like generally speaking I think it's about the mountains it's you know this mon monumental yeah, thing actually. like you don't want to be blasting like your music on yeah. your, your little thing even though I'm not like I'm not saying that this is like not what like I'm, I'm not judging it but I see why people don't do it that yeah, often yeah no, that's true um I was speaking of bouldering actually. Um, you want to go climbing on Saturday? Yes. Because uh, friends going to Mabley Green. He was like, "Oh, I'm going Mabley Green with like a bunch of really strong climbers." Uh, is he still? Ha is, this, is he he's still back here? Back in London now. Really? Yeah. For like a v just visiting. Uh, no, he's leaving for France soon. Oh, so he he was still here all this time. No, he came back like last uh, week. Fair. Sorry, get into fair, fair. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I brought I brought climbing gear with with me right now. Um, ready to go anytime yeah yeah because <laughs> uh, i i expected that we're going to be talking about climbing a lot today so <laughs> i was like shit uh, i think we I have <laughs> i might want to i might want to really go climbing after i'm just gonna have <laughs> this as a just in case you know just oh, to stay sure. safe so he did the he was doing the overhanging thing oh, 6B. Yeah. overhanging and so we like we basically like he put up the first he was like i want to go first um and he was like because you can't go first because if you do it then it's gonna <laughs> he didn't want to have the the hit to the ego which is fair enough because i i didn't want it either uh i mean there's climbing is not very like competitive but like you kind of want to be the person like who, set, who does the route sure um but it kind of devolved a bit and um so he would like put up the first two routes and then he was like fuck it, like this is like really hard like i'm coming down and then i would clip in and so then i would like top rope to that first to that, mm -hmm. to that second one and right. then i would lead up to the next route, right. and I'd be like, "Fuck, this is like really hard." I'd come down, and right. then he would top rope to the next one, mm -hmm. and then it'd just be a rinse and repeat all the way to the top. Mm -hmm. But we didn't get to the top; we ended up getting to the last hold, uh, which is where I f like this was the route like I actually like learned to like lead climb like in like terms of like taking a fall, and, yeah, like, and being able but to like fall catch or? someone as well. Oh, okay, yeah, like Fed fell and I fell, and I'm like, yeah, just like. As, as long as you're like comfortable with the equipment like it's yeah. fine and the communication between you both the two climbers is is pretty it's pretty key and it's it helps out a lot but um if you don't get to the top of a route uh and you leave a quick drop there you need to use that to get down right and so you're like great we're just gonna have to leave this quick draw because we couldn't we couldn't do it and there's, a, there's like these two german girls next to us who are climbing an insane more insane overhang like a horizontal roof like 20 meters up 7c oh wow like, no shit yeah they're like oh nice. yeah we can get your equipment in yeah here. <laughs> we're like oh yes please thank you <laughs> nice oh wow a lot of german climbers in, yeah. in the area yeah it's not far from them no no it's i mean i think it borders it's not too far from austria mm. so 
Yeah, all those nations climb a lot. Yeah. French, Italians. Yeah, they're just good at it, aren't they? I mean, Germans, they have the area, don't they? Austrians. I wish it's the same in the UK, except we just have. I mean, we have boulders and trad, but have you heard of like the wide? What is it? The wild boys? Wide boys? Wide boys? Wide boys. Wide boys. The two dudes from Sheffield. Uh, you, like it rings a, uh, it, yeah, it, it rings a bell. Are they are they about crack climbing? Crack climbing? Yeah, like the best crack climbers in the uh, world. I think I've seen the real rock about it. Yeah. Have you seen the uh, real rock oh, episode yeah, about really it? Good, okay, so really those are the guys. Episode. Yeah, yeah, they're the guys. Okay. They're in Sheffield. And no. I think over lockdown they were like climbing, uh, like finding like bridges over uh. over like uh, canals where there was cracks oh, under wow. the bridge. Holy shit. But man, if you see, like, uh, even when I go under a bridge now, like, I look up at, like, like, the one near Mile End, you look up and it's like, oh, that's a crack there. And then it's just, like, full of, like, thick spider webs. Yeah. I do not want to be putting my Commitment. hand in something like that, man. Commitment. No way. Have you ever tried crack climbing? I, I've no, never. No, I never have. Looks kind of weird. Sounds, like... It sounds pretty intense. It sounds so intense. It sounds so... Rips like, your hands apart. Yeah, and I think it's, like, it's almost like something else than, yeah, than climbing. Yeah, like... Apparently, it's like once you do it, like it's kind of like, oh, this is like really good. Like everyone really, really want to do it, oh. but I think it takes a bit of effort to get into it. Like the technique with do your hand positioning is like, you put a palm in and then you put right. a fist over the top right. of your hand like that, uh -huh. and then it's and kind of it's kind of the same movement just over and over. So it's very right. like endurance based, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's something I don't feel n n natural pull. No. Or what I'm thinking is there's probably like a spot in London where maybe in, in, at the castle they have a they have a crack where you could probably try because it's so big. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I still haven't been, man. Oh, you haven't been? No. It's for lead, it's the best. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I need to go. I'm only in London for another week, man, as well. Yeah. O only for another week, right? Yeah, yeah we should go. So the only thing I think for lead, you don't need quick draws, but you need the rope. But you probably can rent it there, a rope. Yeah, I have a rope. Oh really? I haven't really used it, but no, hmm. no, no. But do you have a belaying device? Uh, yeah, I only have an ATC, which is like, basically like this like very rudimentary belaying mm -hmm. device, which doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, lock, it doesn't lock yeah, itself auto -locks. automatically. It relies entirely on the person using it to yeah, be able to catch them as yeah, well. So I don't yeah. really feel that comfortable. Of but course. I used something called a uh, click up. Yeah. Uh, in Italy, I also use a Grigri. Yeah, Grigri. And they're both like legit. really good. Like, I oh mean, they are both very similar, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, they are. It's, but it's like, oh my god, I like, I don't have to do. Yeah, no I really stress. don't have to care about. No stress. It. Yeah, just keep an eye on things, and it's yeah, completely fine. I agree so with you. I intend on buying a click up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, we should do some lead, man. Yeah, I, I, I would love that for sure. Yeah. Well, uh, and so, what were the routes you sent in Italy? Um, I mean, they were mostly like. The wall was like pretty, pretty good, like um, quite like good pockets, um, like just nice things to be able to grab onto. Some it, a lot I found like with lead climbing, it's a lot of like just. I mean, I've been taught by Fred to do this, and it's just like taking your time and like finding the best hold. Like you get to the, you know, you move up a little bit, and then you spend time and you kind of like just feel around. You don't have to be like quick or anything, and because you can be looking on. The problem that we had on this 6B was that we were going up this left side, this right side, and it was like making it into like a 7A or something really difficult. We just didn't consider going up the left, and it's like really about like inspecting the route. Mm -hmm. And so with a lot of these walls, it was a lot of kind of big walls, like good holds, just taking our time. Sometimes it was nice crimps, but a lot of footwork as well. Mm -hmm. Like you really have to think about your your technique. You know, technique almost is, is as important as your your strength and kind of your your how comfortable you are on the wall. Yeah, for sure. Excuse me, I'm gonna cough. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, bless you. Yeah, thank you. We had to postpone this uh, this podcast from yesterday because it was. Are you are you better now? I was dying. Yeah, I don't really? know what it was, man. Oof. But back. was it just one day flu? Uh, it was like two days. Yeah, just a really oh. bad flu. I haven't had it like. I don't, I don't think I had COVID. You know. No, I don't think and, so. And uh, haven't had flu for a while either, but Interesting. yeah, maybe it just got you. Maybe yeah. it just got you. Happens. So, in terms of climbing, we have that pretty much covered. I think so. What, what time are we on here? <laughs> <laughs> and stop talking about it. 
No, no, it's it's good. But what about the walking experience? The walking, uh -huh. yeah, man. Um, I was thinking, like, uh, when you were telling me about your travels, about how it's kind of just like a lot of like turning a corner and it's like another field. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like walk for an hour and then oh look, it's the same. Right. Um, I got that a bit. Um, but I kind of like st when I started off in Grenoble, that was France was really my the main place I was like walking because when I traveled through Italy and Greece, it was it was all just through like transportation. Um, but I kind of like packed. I said I, we started the conversation saying I packed light, but it was hot and like and I needed food as well. Like not many shops around, Water. and so I bought like a four liter bottle of water, like a one of those collapsible. Oh ones. wow, four um, liter. And all of my food Big one. as well, and like, I was like, I, uh, I I looked on the maps and it's like, okay, like I need to get to this point, and uh, it says it takes like five or six hours. So I started walking super uphill. My bag's like 30 kilos at this point. I'm like fuck, and um, I was like, okay, I'll get, I'll take the bus. I, like, this was. <laughs> I was like, I'll, I'm walking my to man. the bus station just because the road after that point got very like, it, you're on them like a mountainside. And like it's lots of blind corners with like fast cars so i was like okay maybe i'll just like so it was only like a 15 minute bus ride but it was like a two hour walk because yeah of the, because of the inclination and um i finally get up to this point and i'm like it's like this just like a plaque on the side of like a cliff face for the bus station and i'm like okay and the next next bus is like two hours i was like great and um hmm. I, I got like a, a weather warning on my phone um, from the French, like met, and it was like uh, amber weather warning, thunderstorms in your area. And oh, like really? after I got that, like the sky just went black, and like the wind <laughs> is like picking up, and like I was like, okay, maybe I'll just like try hitchhiking, never done it before, but I'll just stick out my hand. Nice and then much. this like old couple, French couple, just picked me up and drove me straight to like the climbing area. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, super nice. So how many days were you hiking? Uh, I think maybe four, four or five. Mm -hmm. So not that much. Mm -hmm. um, For hiking, that's that's I would say that's quite decent. How many kilometers did you do overall? Um, did you do overall? Well, because I did, I got, I like hitchhiked multiple times as well, um, and like peop different people took me like different distances. But like the distance I covered was like 120 kilometers. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, and like. Like some pe people just like really like, I know I was speaking to my dad. I'm like, when the hitchhiker is like, oh, you be careful about whose car you're getting in, which mm -hmm. is fair point. But like, you know, the people who are picking you up are generally, they're, they're going to be people who are quite friendly. And you can gauge generally like immediately, like if it's kind of a dodgy person or not. Yeah. I never had that experience. Right. Everyone's like super talkative and friendly. Mm. Um, but the hiking part, like, um, I ended up like, the next day when I woke up after camping and like having to set my tent up in this thunderstorm. Oh, and geez. that was like my first night of sleeping outside and it was fucking freezing, man. Yeah, it was so cold. That was like super high up in the mountains, it was just like clouds at like your feet. Um, but then the next day I woke up and my legs were like, after the like mission I did to get up to that altitude, my legs were just completely destroyed. And I was like, oh no, like I've got so f much further to go. Um, I was like, just, I'll just start walking. And uh, like beautiful terrain, like like high, you know, those like kind of like narrow tree forests surrounding like a road and then beautiful mountains everywhere. And like there's not really much of a footpath, but there's not that many cars either. And right. so everyone's pretty conscious. The cyclists as well and, and everyone's, like everyone's saying hello to each other. So I was quite comfortable there. And I managed to get to a point where I was just, uh, I got, I was just hiking downhill after hitchhiking to the kind of the top. Nice. Um, and then I was walking for maybe like three hours and it was just like good temperature. Like I didn't have music on. I thought I'd be listening to music or like listening to an audio book. I kind of wanted to be conscious of the road. Right. And so I was kind of just like, I was thinking like a lot about what am I going to be thinking about when I'm like just walking for hours mm. and I don't know I guess it's kind of just it's just a lot of reflection I guess and th I thought about the future a lot um, 
and yet, just like kind of just like singing and just like talking to myself there's yeah. no one around you know yeah. it's just like yeah whatever i agree i agree when i was cycling i also noticed that i started talking to myself a lot yeah. i was like my best jokes are you know there's n- nobody to hear th- to hear <laughs> but me <laughs> you stop um, and write it down yeah um so in terms of the experience as it was what 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 has this what were your you know take away take takeaways takeaways yeah um i mean i think i feel like really glad that i did it because it feels like something that you don't really have m- like um as much of an opportunity to do it when you get older mm-hmm. um i mean you know i'm only 24 but you know when i'm in when i'm 30 and i have to like i'm more invested in my career i'm thinking about like a family and like finances and all these things but right now it's like you know i'm just a single dude like enjoying my life and it's like this seems like a good time to be able to do it and i'm really glad that i i've did it and and feel like comfortable being able to like do it again yeah um so you think you expanded your comfort zone yeah for sure i'm already thinking about the next places that oh I yeah go. what are what's on your mind i'd like to do like some like a uh, kind of like maybe like east europe a little bit mm-hmm. like uh poland and uh i don't know maybe like slovakia mm-hmm. um a lot of a lot of dirt bag dirt climbers bag. in poland <laughs> bro <laughs> <laughs> wild wild, wild, wild camping yeah um, you will need a shovel though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you this. They don't have toilets in Poland. No, not not if you're wild camping. Oh, they right. don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's the best. It's the best. If I can just chip in my my two cents to yeah, this okay. conversation. Some of my best experiences climbing were in Poland with my friends. Oh, sick, w- w- uh, wild wild camping. So no amenities, but. The guys I was camping with, they used to be scouts as kids. Oh, okay. So let me tell you, Pretty. their camp, their campsite nice. making skills were on point. <laughs> uh, they bad. really were on point, I, I have to say. There would be 10, 15 of us, it, like a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, s- yeah, so nice. We would, uh, we would just pay for like for taking the trash or, or we would just take the trash ourselves so we like we actually le- le- left the the campsite in a really pristine yeah. condition yeah, yeah. like it was really nice like collected the you know cigarette buds and things like that so yeah. like we treated you know the nature with, with all due respect yeah I guess that's why they get a bit of a bad rap sometimes like wild campers people don't want them camping on their lands because of mm. people littering yeah it doesn't take much effort to pick up your shit does it exactly exactly and yeah so if you if you ever ever thinking about climbing in poland it's uh you know give me a shout <laughs> and hopefully it can can happen a lot of a lot of good climbing in poland you have granites you have limestones yeah 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 there's a lot i was mostly climbing in gra- uh, sorry in limestone which is the it's more for like finger stuff right and, yeah. and granites are more for crimps yeah if, okay. if that makes sense yeah, yeah. Um, and also the thing with limestone is that it gets very slippery if a lot of people walk on it because it's quite soft so it becomes um, almost like polished huh, okay, yeah so yeah. in Poland you have routes that are so heavily used because in Poland you will have queues for some routes if on a busy weekend let's say or what or whatever and some of that so, so you just know like okay this is where you put your your hand this is where you put your other hand because just so many people walked up this route that it's 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 not like a climbing gym but it's kind of like in a climbing gym just because it's been climbed so many times yeah it's established yeah it's been it's been tamed in a way yeah. um but yeah amazing stuff really amazing stuff um and my other experience of climbing, but for a climbing outdoors in England, which lasted for five minutes because oh. then it was raining the whole weekend. <laughs> Typical England. Right? Yeah, oh, that was such a bummer. We went to Peak District, but um, it was just raining. Uh, climbing society. Yeah, yeah, but but it was raining the whole weekend, so so sad. But I climbed like one boulder problem, which was like V zero. <laughs> oh, sounds good um, shit. Yeah, yeah. So that wasn't as it should have been, but. 
you know, you, it, you take whatever you're given. Exactly. But the other experience was in Portugal, which was amazing. So, so good. It's interesting that actually the, the face that we were climbing, it's, I would say it's kind of under -explo exploited. Like you could set up more routes there, but I guess not that many people climb there right. or whatever, w for whatever reason it is. But I think Lisbon might be one of the best places to, to live because you have climbing just outside the city and you have surfing just outside the city. So, yeah, yeah, and the right. city itself is beautiful, like good food and everything. Like I only been there for like maybe 30 minutes in Lisbon, Lisbon, but I only heard all the best things. Yeah, that's all I've heard as well. Yeah, I really want to go. Yeah, well. yeah, I, I really want to go to Lisbon and like climb and surf there. Like, some, seems like a really good lifestyle, you know, people have there. Yeah, how was your surfing, by the way? Oh, it was so good. So initially, it was actually pretty rough. I first thing that went wrong is I had a, I, I took a wetsuit that was slightly too big, and that's never good because yeah. the the cold water is like you're not warm. But like then, obviously, I dialed it in, and it was fine. Um, but I was a bit cocky at the beginning, so instead of just taking some lessons with a with a guy who knows the spot, I just like. I eyeballed the spot and like it looked good. I was like, okay, here are the rocks. Like here's where the waves break. I'm gonna be fine. And like I was just getting pounded by the waves because obviously I'm not that good at all. So I was like, shit, something is going terribly wrong. So like the first hour and a half cost me as much energy as I used for the, like the remaining three days, oh, basically. No. Yeah, because then I took like a, um, I actually went with a, with a with a with a. With a I think I did a lesson or two um, that helped me uh, quite a bit and and but yeah most of the time I was just surfing on my own just just catching some waves trying to you know get the reps in oh, you love it man it's it's the best you speak I, very highly of it I need to get oh to try. yeah it's so good <laughs> it's so good and you know the, the the whole lifestyle around it kind of like with climbing climbing is 10 out of 10 but also the whole lifestyle yeah, around it, it um, like uh, uh, kind of all the all the climbers in Poland I know are like boozing and smoking, you know, like the <laughs> <laughs> like the good good life. Um, like you're it's a happy sport, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But it's, I I think it's personal. I personally think it's very interesting that you kind of have two currents. Like there are uh, there are those like kind of like I would g I would guess it it kind of how it was in let's say Yosemite like in the seventies where like you had those like dirt bags, you know, living on a dollar a day, yeah, things yeah. like that. So you have those kind of climbers and they mostly would like their experience of climbing is climbing outdoors. Whereas like there's also, I would say like a second wave of climbing people who started mostly in the gym and, 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 and kind of like later on they ex ex explore outdoor climbing. Yeah. Um, and true. I think it's, it's, it's a very, it's a, it's, it's like, it's a, it's a different vibe. Of course, if you like live in a city, you don't have outdoor spots to climb like, it's so much better to climb indoors most of the time yeah. and you know it's like it's a it's an amazing sport so 10 out of 10 i think um, it's like 30 climbing gyms in london oh really yeah no shit yeah, there's so many it's become a really popular sport now i mean i mean even here they open two two yeah, in like a few months have you been to strong yeah, yeah it's so. i think it's really good it's really good yeah i, I think like it's it really well. good do you like it yeah yeah do you like beth wall i haven't been to beth Green. oh really before. It's yeah. also good. Yeah. It's really good. Like, all of them are on point, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I still think I prefer Myland, most of them. Yeah, Myland is home, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Myland. Myland is like, Myland oh, is the gee. home turf. Yeah, it's, it's the, the home. It's climbing wall in London, I it's think. Exactly. Well. Yeah. 1976, I think. It's 86, isn't it? Oh, yeah? <laughs> I'll take your word for it. I'll take your word for just it. Just from the posters, maybe you're uh, No, no, no. I, I think I, I just remember wrong. Um, <laughs> my memory isn't the best. Um, but one way or another, it's so old, yeah, the good. wall. But yeah, it's it's the spot. I also like it the most. I think it's it's so interesting because I kind of know the holds as well. So I'm kind of like, oh, I know where to grab this one so, it hold, so I can hold well to it. Yeah. Whereas when I go to other ones, I'm like, oh, I don't really know those holds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, if that yeah. makes sense. No, for sure. Yeah, well good stuff we we've been talking for an hour so pretty long episode but oh, like nice. we yeah we had to cover your crazy journeys so would you recommend people you know doing what you did absolutely please do it i'd highly recommend uh, it just it, solo it just 
go out and be a bit independent and just go for a travel. I love it. I I agree with your message and deep water soloing. Oh man, I I, I love this seg- segment of 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 the, yeah. of the show. That was so good, so badass. Okay, bye everyone. Bye everybody.